You can't live a good Christian life on your own. You know something else you can't do? You can't save yourself. You can't be made righteous in the eyes of God by your own power, by your own strength. The Bible says that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. didn't say all of our wickedness. It said all of our righteousness. Everything that we can do good is nothing but filthy, filthy rags before God. I want to show you this illustration. I want this hand to represent you and me, and I want this wallet to represent all of the bad things we've done, all of our sin. Here we are with all of our sin. And the Bible says that we all have sinned. The Bible says, for, for all have sinned. That's you and that's me. That's everyone in the world. Everyone in the world has sinned. All of us have done that. There, there are no exclusions. There is one exclusion, which is Jesus Christ, who is God, Son of God, God in the flesh. But everybody in this room is a sinner. There is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. None of us are perfect. None of us. And the Bible says, here we are with our sin and and there's so many churches that say, well, if you just turn over a new leaf, they use the word repent, they say turn over a new leaf, you gotta, you got to turn direct, you, you gotta, you got to turn away from your sin. You can't turn away from your sin. You can't turn away from your sin because you're a sinner. People say, well, if you get baptized or give money to church or walk an aisle or pray prayer, all these things. And the Bible says that in order to go to heaven, you have to be perfect. People say, well, I ask them, I say, well, are you going to heaven when you die? They say, I'm a pretty good person. You say, well, being good is good, but being good isn't good enough to get to heaven. You've got to be perfect to go to heaven. Perfect. Now, how does that happen when you, right here, have all this sin on you? Well, this sin has to be paid for. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That's what the Bible says. The wages of sin is death. That's the payment for sin. Somebody has to pay a death payment for this. Now, if you die with this sin, you will spend an eternity separated from God with your sin because you're paying for it. Okay? But I want this hand, and I mean it reverently, to represent the Lord Jesus. The Bible says, For he, God, hath made him Christ, who knew no sin, to be made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, the wages of sin is death. And so either we can spend an eternity trying to pay this payment of sin, or we can trust that Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ's death on the cross 2,000 years ago was sufficient. It's his death on the cross that makes the payment because the wages of sin is death. And he didn't know any sin. He was perfect. He was sinless. Therefore, he's able to make the payment for our sin. Now that's amazing. And then we have his righteousness. He literally looks at you and me as righteous as he looks upon Christ. And he gives us something called eternal life. You know what eternal life is? That's forever. We believe that when you're saved, you're always saved. When Christ saves you, his payment was sufficient to pay it forever. People say, well, what if I sin tomorrow? And I say, well, did he pay for that sin or not? Was his sin payment was his death payment enough to pay for all your sin or just the one you committed now and yesterday no tomorrow too and I say right he died and he secures you with his blood his payment on the cross was sufficient for all of our sins we become a child of God John chapter 1 for as many as receive him to them gave you power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name you believe in Christ alone as your savior you become a child of and he gives you eternal life. That's forever life, by the way. You can never lose that. That's awesome. So I sin tomorrow and I'm still a child? Sure. Just as much as my son who sins tomorrow is still my son. But what if, uh, what if, we, what if we turn our back on God and we say, God, I hate you and I don't want anything to do with you? Well, let me ask you a question. If my kids did that, are they still my children? Sure they are. But what if they went down to the courthouse and they tried to expunge me off the uh, birth certificate or whatever. You know, they say, I'm, no, I don't want you to be my dad anymore. When you draw his blood, I guarantee it will come back to me. Because he is my child. When we're saved, we're saved forever. And ever, amen. And that is amazing. That God would love us so much that he would secure us with a payment of blood. We have an awesome God, don't we? 
to an awesome God. Friends, if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, you don't have to make Him Lord of your life to be saved. You have to make Him, all you have to do is trust Him as your Savior. You don't have to promise to, to worship Him. You don't have to promise to follow Him. You trust Him as your Savior. You trust Him as your Savior. You believe He died for you. You believe He was buried. You rose again from the, he rose again from the grave. You're saved eternally. 